I think they should do a swap out for another candidate. I do think he should bow out because I don't think you should have a person like that running for a leader of your country. He doesn't seem with it. I don't even think it's his age. Like, I don't mind his age at all. It's like literally questioning his health and his cognitive health. If you can't see he's unfit for office, you're crazy. The guy is just not there. Joining me now, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson. Uh, Senator, it's good to see you. Sources are telling Fox there is a letter that's being circulated among Democrat lawmakers calling on Biden to leave the race if he can't kick concerns over his mental acuity. What are you hearing from your Democratic colleagues, and what do you think is the significance of him kicking off his rehabilitation tour in your state of Wisconsin? Well, Cheryl, uh, good to be with you here today. Um, first of all, we're, we're on recess, so uh, we're not talking to Democrat colleagues uh, other than what we hear in the media. Now, obviously, I think uh, President Biden is going to desperately try and cling to power. I think he and his uh, wife, his family, uh, like the position. They like being in the White House. I think uh, one of the rationales also with, with Hunter being in, in legal jeopardy, and quite honestly, Joe Biden could be in legal jeopardy as well. Uh, they want to be able to you know, have that next four years to potentially pardon Hunter. So, again, they have a number of uh, reasons why they would want to stay in power, but I, I think it's a, a desperate act. Uh, I don't think it's going to work. I've been predicting, uh, or I've been certainly saying since last summer, that I had a really hard time believing uh, Joe Biden would uh, be their nominee. And literally, I've, I've been saying for the last three to four years that as troubling as the Biden scandals are, you know, his corrupt, corrupt family, uh, his obvious mental and physical decline throughout his entire presidency. What's even more disturbing is the corruption within our federal agencies that have been covering up for him, that he has weaponized. And even, even worse is the cover-up of the mainstream media, the corruption, the complicity of the mainstream media. Now, now all of a sudden, the media culprits are coming out here where, you know, hey, we've been seeing this, so why haven't we been saying anything about it? It's because the media, by and large, are not staffed by journalists anymore. They're, they're staffed by advocates for the left. And they've been covering up for his disastrous policies. They're really destroying this country, the open borders. And they've certainly been covering up for his infirmities and his corrupt family. And that seems to be where a lot of the anger is coming now, headed towards the White House, his staff, for protecting him, the bubble of Biden, uh, some are calling it. And there is blame being put on and some in the media as well, to your point. So President Biden is set to host 31 NATO leaders in Washington next week, celebrating 75 years of the alliance. It's going to be a week of photo ops, dinners, typically unscripted Q&As. There's going to be a big press conference, we know. He'll be solo. All things Biden though, was just slammed for, skipping out on when he went to the G7 summit in Italy last month. There's now reports leaders were, quote, shocked to see his lack of focus there. So what do you expect from him next week when he's not only on the world stage once again, but he's going to be hosting this major event? How, how high are the stakes, do you think, for the United States? What I'd like to have NATO ministers talk about is, in retrospect, go back and say, how do we go from a position in the early 90s, the, the fall of the Berlin Wall with perestroika and glasnost and, and cooperation between then Russia and the West, uh, getting rid of nuclear weapons in Ukraine, you know, getting rid of nuclear waste in Russia, you know, Russia accepting the fact that there needed to be U.S. troops in Europe to maintain stability to now we have a bloody stalemate, a proxy war between the West in Russia, rather than bringing freedom and prosperity to Ukraine, much of Ukraine has been destroyed in this bloody stalemate. And, and Vladimir Putin is not taking the use of nuclear weapons off the table. So what NATO ministers ought to be looking at is what went wrong? How did we lose the peace? You know, people were writing back in the 90s about the end of history. Uh, history is, is uh, in flames right now because I think an awful lot of bad decisions on people on all sides. And rather than continue to push uh, more and more arms, uh, threatening more use of arms into Russia, which is only going to increase the risk of nuclear war. We need to figure out how, how can we step back from the brink? Now, how can we end this bloody stalemate and try and come up with a, a better solution than what we've been pursuing over the last decades? Right. Well, you know, another big piece of news this week is you see a lot of these Democrats going after the Supreme Court now. And then next week, you've got AOC. She's vowing to file articles of impeachment against conservative judges. She is criticizing their decision to grant partial immunity to former President Trump as a, quote, assault on democracy. 
while your Senate colleague Elizabeth Warren is again calling to expand the high court, with Chuck Schumer slamming what he's not calling a MAGA court that has undermined its own credibility. And according to a recent analysis, th this isn't the case. In fact, out of the 49 court decisions in this term, only 11 were decided along ideological lines. What do you make of this push from those on the left? Well, first of all, first of all, you know, FDR couldn't pack the courts because America was outraged by the concept of doing that, as well as the mainstream media wouldn't let FDR get away with that. So now the the left the left wing media pretty well sits back and allows people like uh, AOC and, and Elizabeth Warren to, to openly talk about packing the courts without any kind of pushback. So it's entirely possible. It's what is definitely at stake in November if, for example, Democrat nominee wins and they get the majority in the House and the Senate, you know, kiss America goodbye. They will pack the court. They will turn additional, you know, whether it's Puerto Rico or D.C. into states so they can get four more Democrat senators. They want a one-party nation. They, they want power forever. They're trying to crush dissent. That's why they're weaponized the federal government against uh, ordinary Americans. So, no, be very, be very afraid of what Democrat governance will do, and you can bank on the fact that what government has, Democrat governance has already done is literally put this nation on a path of destruction. We need to defeat these people. Yeah. All right. Senator Ron Johnson, thank you for your time. It's always good to see you.